Welcome to the TCT uh, AP 2022. Today we are going to have an abstract presentation. Uh, the uh, theme is imaging and physiology. Co-chairing with me is uh, Dr. Ima Shaban. Uh, we have distinguished uh, panelists, uh, Dr. Tenyarek uh, Aram Sarong, uh, Dr. Jung Ho He, Dr. Uh, Ringji Ken, uh, Ringup Kapu, uh, and also Dr. Jung Yan Shite. Uh, we are going to have uh, uh, three presenters. Uh, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Shaban to introduce uh, our first uh, speaker. Welcome to everybody. Uh, I am sure we will have a fantastic uh, presentation today and uh, we'll discuss together. Uh, uh, of course, we will learn something, of course. And uh, let's start with the first one, which is a calcified plaque detected on optical coherence uh, tomography with uh, deep learning and cross uh, validated with optical and ultrasound signals. Uh, a contemporary appraisal and uh, preamble to the use of combined IVOS and OCT will be presented by Dr. Huang, please. Um, hello everyone, this is Zhao Yu Huang from National University of Ireland, Galway. The topic of my presentation today is calcified plaque detected on OCT with deep learning and cross-validated with optical and ultrasound signals. Our study tried to perform a complementary appraisal for OCT deep learning and the findings set a preamble for combined IVUS and OCT catheter. These are our disclosures. Our authors have nothing to disclose except Professor Sarice, Professor Wines, and Professor Tu. In the past 20 years, several technologies have been developed to make better understanding for intracoronary images. IVUS virtual histology performs spectral analysis to radio frequency data and it classifies different tissue based on the amplitude and the frequency of the signal. Ivers echogenicity utilizes the main grade level of adventitia to identify hypo and hyper echogenic tissues and decalcification. For OCT images, previous studies have proven that optical properties, including light attenuation and backscattering, has the potential to differentiate different types of tissues, since each type of tissue has their unique distribution of optical properties. For calcified plaque, the attenuation and backscattering are both very low. Recently, a novel technology was proposed for OCT based on deep learning. This automated method has been validated using annotations from an expert panel and showed an accuracy of 87%. However, it has not been comprehensively cross-validated using all those previously mentioned technologies. So, the objective of our study is to fill in this gap. We mainly focused on the detection of coronary calcifications, since it has long been recognized as an important predictor for future events. The concordance between OCT deep learning and optical and ultrasound signals will be investigated, and the calcium arc measured by these modalities will also be compared. In our study, the absorbed cohort B5 year follow up data were analyzed. When the scaffolds has been fully absorbed, this will not impact the calcium visualization. The co registration between OCT and IVUS were performed using the unique radiobic marker embedded at both ends of the bioresorbable scaffold. Calcified plaque detected by OCT deep learning will be cross validated with optical properties, including light attenuation and backscattering, grail scale IVUS, IVUS virtual histology, and echogenicity. As a result, 72 co registered cross sections were investigated in current study. OCT deep learning identified 43 cal calcified plaques, and 95% of them were further corroborated by optical properties. Perfect concordance have been has been observed between optical and ultrasound signals in 33 plaques. Here is an example of the cases showing perfect concordance. The calcified plaque detected by deep learning were corroborated by grayscale IVUS, IVUS virtual histology, and echogenicity, and their attenuation and backscattering values fall in the unique range for calcified plaque. 
Then we further looked into these nine discordant cases where calcified plaque was detected only by ultrasound signals. We tried to find out the possible explanation. Here we can see that more than half of the discordant cases happened when the calcified plaque were hidden behind the OTCT artifactual shadowing, which was caused either by guidewire artifact or radiobake marker. And other three of them were possibly caused by the relatively shallow penetration depths. After ex excluding the five cases with optical confounding factors, we can see a significant improvement for the concordance between optical and ultrasound signals. As a result, OCT deep learning showed substantial agreement with grayscale IVAS, ecogenicity, and virtual histology. Here shows the passing bar block regression and blend Altman plot for calcium arc measured from different modalities. We can discover a moderate correlation and agreement between OCT deep learning and grayscale IVAS, virtual histology, and ecogenicity. When looking back to all these results, we can see that Firstly, the cross-validation using optical and ultrasound signals reveals the reliability of this novel deep learning algorithm. However, the OCT deep learning will still be impacted by some inherent limitations of OCT, including limited penetration depths and signal void due to guidewire artifact or in current data set, the radiobic marker. Furthermore, the moderate concordance was expected for calcium arc measured from different modalities, since they are measured from different physical signals with different spatial resolution. So, in conclusion, to the best of our knowledge, we were the first study trying to perform a comprehensive cross-validation between OCT and IVAS. It has been proven that OCT empowered by deep learning showed a substantial agreement with both optical and ultrasound signals for detecting coronary calcification. The comprehensive assessment provided by OCT and IVERS hurdles the potential diagnostic value of combined IVERS and OCT cassettes. That's all my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much for the excellent presentation and very interesting data. Uh, this presentation is open for discussion, please. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for a beautiful presentation. So uh, do you have experience to evaluate the couch file nodule? Because uh, by OCT, sometimes couch file nodule is difficult to diagnose such, uh, to differentiate between the red stromos like this. So do you have experience for couch file nodule? Uh, we have not currently do such uh, the research, but they might be a future um, future research point for us. Thank you for, for the suggestion. Okay, thank you. I have a question. So that, uh, there are many components in the coronary artery, such as uh, the lipid arc or the, the other things, such as uh, the uh, cap thickness. So that is there any reason to choose the, the calcium to the, the make the comparison between the OCT and IVUS? Uh, yes, uh, so current study is to start with the calcified plaque. And uh, furthermore, we are currently designing some um, to validate more uh, tissue components detected by OCT deep learning uh, using the ultrasound signals or the optical signals, including attenuation and backscattering to see if um, the concordance was still good. So, Can I make a oh, sorry, go on. Severe calcification is still, if you have severe calcification, is still a problem to get with a catheter or not? Um, in, when the severe cal calcification um, significantly encroaches the lumen, then it might be a problem to intervene the um, imaging catheters. But um, if the, the imaging is still possible, I think it will be feasible for uh, OCT and IVAS to detect the calcified plaque. Um, however, for IVAS images, there might be a problem for the um, severely calcified plaque. The ultrasound signal cannot pass that, so we may not be able to visualize the tissue behind the calcified plaque. This um, brings us to the one of the advantages, uh, advantages of OCT images. It can kind of see through the um, calcification. Sure, sure. 
And what, what about the profile of the combined capture? Is still the same like single uh, OCT capture or, or uh, IBUS capture or more? On combined catheter, um, I think is it has two sensors at the tips, so it can perform both OCT or IBUS, or um, the cardiologist can select what type of the um, imaging they want to perform. And there are also some other um, combined catheters with some other image modalities, um, including near infrared and uh, some others. Yeah. Okay. I think that there's some kind of limitation in this kind of study because of the, you know that the, we have the two, the IVOS or OSTs at different times, so maybe it is very difficult to match or frame by frames as to end the, the some the modification is needed to confirm that this is calcium or not. So that I think I already with some kind of experience when I was in Rotterdam. So that uh, I fully understand your state the, the the scenario. So that uh, anyway that it is a good design to uh, detect that the calcium um, via the OCT on IBUS simultaneously. One Thank you. Uh, practical question. Uh, you mentioned that the wire artifact is a major problem and that's the main reason we don't get concordance. Have you thought of any way around it? Would doing multiple runs make a difference? You know, if you do two runs, uh, you know, do you think there might be a different orientation of the wire? And then can we combine the images? Have you got any other ideas how we can get around this? Um, thank you. And I think there might be two solutions. The first is, um, I. I have found several studies uh, trying to investigate the um, possibility to perform the guideway free OCT images. And uh, uh, if it, this feasibility and safety has been proven, maybe in the future, this kind of guideway free OCT image is, um, is more important, uh, can be performed. And also there are some algorithms trying to make some interpretations for the um, areas with guideway artifact. This might um, has the potential to be a substitute for, for this um, for the signal void due to the guideway artifact. But I think the first one, the guideway free OCT image will be the uh, most important solution for this problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much again for the excellent presentation and very, very interesting data coming from. And we move to the second presentation, which is the early and long-term outcome of intravascular, uh, intravascular ultrasonography guided uh, primary, uh, uh, primary percutaneous coronary intervention in ST elevation myocardial infarction and network met meta-analysis and will be presented by Dr. Uh, Jabanta, please. Uh, good afternoon for the moderator, panelists, and all the participants. I'm Pranaj Ganata from Medical Faculty of Diana University. Today, I would like to present our research, our meta-analysis about early and long-term outcome of the intravascular ultrasonography guided primary percutaneous coronary intervention in ST elevation myocardial infraction, a network meta-analysis. The authors declare no conflict of the interest. For the background, IFUS can provide the usefulness of the information about the lesion characteristic, such as severity of calcification and existence of the lipid-rich plug. Moreover, the ability of IFUS to detect the complication and the stand under expansion could improve the safety on the usefulness of the PCI. In the setting of the elective PCI, several studies indicated that the IFUS guided PCI was associated with a reduction in the target vessel revascularization or the TVR. However, various studies have shown the inconsistencies in the patient's outcome with IFUS guided primary PCI because IFUS believed to associate it with a delay in the revascularization sign. Therefore, the aim of the study was to compare the outcome of the IFUS guided primary PCI versus the angiography guidance on the early and long term. A clinical outcome of STEMI patients. For the method, we perform a systematic search in the PubMed Science Direct ProQuest for the study reported until 30 November 2021. Included study were evaluated for the risk of bias based on the new Castle Ottawa scale for the observational study. The primary outcome of uh, interest were all cause mortality, cardiovascular death, early and long term maze. The other outcomes are in hospital mortality, instant restenosis or ISR 
TVR door to balloon time under 90 minutes and the cost. The meta-analysis was performed by the computing the OR using the mental hazel fixed evac model along with the calculation of the 95% of confidence interval. All analysis was performed with Arifman version 5.4, the covering collaboration. And uh, the initial search strategy resulted in 1,648 records. After full text evaluation of the 83 potential eligible records, 10 studies were included in the systematic review and meta-analysis. And this is the result of the new Kestel Ottawa skill assessment. And for the result, from 10 studies, that majority of the study were from Asia, a total 1,192,000 patients with the STEMI underwent primary PCI was included. And this is the baseline characteristic of the patients. Pulled analysis showed that the IFUS guided primary PCI significantly reduced the all cause mortality with OR 0.81 and long term MACE with the OR 0.82 but there was no significant difference in the cardiovascular death in the both groups. The incidence of ISR and TVR were also found significantly lower in the patients with the IFUS guided primary PCI. And when assessed in the term of the number of the patients who achieved the door to balloon time under 90 minutes, there was no significant difference in the both groups. In line with th that result, in hospital mortality was not significantly different in the both groups. But significantly higher mean cost is required in the IFUS guided primary PCI group. For the discussion, the, uh, the main finding of the study was IFUS guidance strongly associated with a lower early and long term MACE, as well as all cause mortality, ISR, and TVR, but not in the cardiovascular death. If we look at the Horizon AMI study that evaluated the MACE related factor in the STEMI patients undergoing primary PCI, it is found that the small lumen area due to stand under expansion, large plug burden, and stand mal opposition significantly associated with a MACE in that study. So, finding in our study can be explained by the general advantages as well as the specific potential of IFUs in acute setting. First, Pre-intervention IFUS allows the accurate sizing of the lesion length and the lumen vessel diameter. As a result, geographic miss and procedural complication due to stand mold sizing can be prevented. Second, IFUS can be used to assess the different plug type, which might improve the procedural planning and the treatment strategy. Third, post-intervention IFUS can be used to guide optimization of the primary PCI by the finding under expansion, malposition, as well as residual focalization or the high plug burden and stand edges. More specifically, for the patients presenting with STEMI, IFUS can be used to visualize the plaque rupture and the attenuation, which are associated with no reflow. Moreover, IFUS allow the assessment of the thrombus burden, thrombus protrusion, and the vulnerable attenuate plaque, which might impact the treatment strategy. Angiography limitation in the visualization may also have contribution to this result. For the an example, can be seen in, this, in, the, in the result where two-dimensional visualization of the angiography underestimate the significant stenosis that visualized by the IFUs. This finding is also in line with the previous meta-analysis, but in the stable setting and the more complex patients, where it seems the reasonable to conclude that the beneficial effect of the IFUs guided PCI also applies to the patients with the acute setting. However, because IFUs guided primary PCI RCT data are not currently available, further analysis is needed uh, after the spectrum study, isotomy trial, and RCT from the China that will specifically assess the impact of the IFUs guidance on a STEMI are completed. So for the conclusion, the addition of the IFUs in the primary PCI of the STEMI patients was associated with a significant reduction of all cause mortality and MACE compared with the angiography-only guidance. Door to balloon time optimization has the potential to provide a desirable outcome of the STEMI patients with this strategy. It's all about my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, data coming from uh, meta analysis. Uh, it's open for discussion, please. Uh, personally, I don't think the, doing IBIS uh, during uh, a primary PCI will, will, will affect the door to balloon time. Actually, uh, I will just uh, do the wiring and balloon uh, before uh, putting in an IBIS. But I found that IBIS is critically fairly useful in STEMI cases. Uh, sometimes we encounter a, a, a very a different mechanism of a STEMI, not just a plug rupture. Sometimes uh, we, we see uh, uh, erosion, uh, heavy from uh, plug thrombus and uh, also coronary dissection. So I, 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 
I think 90 percent of time I would do an I without affecting the too much the procedure time. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the suggestion. Yes, uh, the reason for the insignificance of the door to balloon time in this study may be the reason as the um, which were underreported in the included studies of the meta analysis. Just two studies are including information informate about the door to balloon time. Uh, but we also hypothesize that uh, if IFUS guided PCI is performed by an experienced team with a contemporary IFUS system, a procedural time will not be significantly longer. But this hypothesis must be proven by the ongoing RCT, like the spectrum study, ISTEMI trial, and RCT from China will specifically assess the impact of IFUS guidance. Thank you. Well, actually, one of the potential problems which might be associated to the uh, IVUS in uh, this setting is uh, distal embolization. That means if you have uh, a large bar, the thrombus bar, then, then uh, you can push it uh, distally by, by IVUS. Is, is that, uh, is that a, a problem, I mean, or how, how you can prevent this uh, event? You, sh you should go for aspiration before IVUS? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, I think so. Uh, we must go the aspiration first uh, before we uh, doing the IFUS. Yeah, I, I think uh, aspiration will. Uh, it is good to, to be done before because one because it uh, 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 restore a flow to distal uh, vessel. Then uh, uh, I mean you you can take your time to to do IFUS without any delay in in uh, reperfusion. Uh, and then it's not modifying anything about the plaque, so you'll have full information again uh, without any disturbance by the uh, thrombus aspiration. Yeah, thank you, doctor, for the suggestion. Any other can comment? Ask, can I, I ask a question? question? So, yes, please. Uh, uh, from your analysis, uh, is there any kind of uh, I was uh, the different kind of I was make anything different, such as uh, solid uh, state or the mechanical I was make any oh. different? Okay, uh, thank you for the question, doctor. So the data that we contain in meta analysis uh, don't describe about the kind of the I views that are uh, used in the uh, study. On the same lines. Um, if cost and availability were not issues, uh, and we had both IVUS and OCT as options, what do you think would be the better imaging in the setting of an MI? Okay, uh, thank you, Doctor, for the question. Um, also, uh, both IVUS and OCT have the similarity. It is a still controversial which intravascular imaging modality is better to use uh, as either the diagnostic or guidance tool. One of the disadvantages of the OCT that I know is the need of the a blood clearance during the pull a pullback since the light signal is attenuated by the red blood cell. A blood clearance is achieved by contrast injection. The total volume of the contrast medium tends to be higher in the OCT guided PCI than those without OCT. Um, that I have read in the uh, Lumen 3 optimized PCI study, the contrast volume during the PCI was significantly higher in the OCT group compared to the other IFUS group or the angiography. And also in contrast to the IFUS, OCT has the lower tissue penetration that um, it's around uh, one until two millimeter, and then I fuse that five until six millimeter, that leading to incomplete visualization of the vessel wall, especially in the large vessel or the in case of the increased plaque burden. So uh, in the patients with the renal impairment of the inclusion in the high plaque burden, so um, I suggest to do a more uh, with the I fuse than the OCT. Thank you, doctor. Okay. In addition, I will add some comment on the, this issue so that in case of the OCT, so we can see that many kinds of slow flow or no reflow after the ballooning. So in this case, it is very difficult to good image of the OCT. So that's the reason so that I prepare the, the IVUS instead of the OCT in, in AMI. Thank you, doctor, for the comment. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We have to wrap up the discussion. I think we had really uh, very interesting data coming from the use of intravascular imaging during uh, uh, primary uh, angioplasty, which will add more uh, precise definition of what you are treating and of course will optimize the outcome in this patient. Uh, so we will move to the last presentation. I would invite my co-moderator to present the last presenter, please.
Dr. Bing. The last speaker, uh, let me see, is uh, Dr. Wen Wenha from Poland. Uh, he's going to present uh, a shortwave intravascular lithotripsy as a novel strategy for the treatment of stand under expansion caused by uh, calcified plus. The chairman, the colleagues, thank you for the invitation for those so, so nice conference. Today, I would like to present the results of our multi center registry in which we assess the shockwave intravascular lithotripsy as the novel method of treatment under expanded stand caused by calcified plaques. I don't have any potential conflict of interest regarding to the current study. The percutaneous coronary intervention with stent implantation is well-known method of treatment significant stenosis in coronary artery lesions. However, adequate stent expansion has become recognized as the, as the main factor contributing um, um, excuse me, contributing to PCA outcomes with stent under expansion being the most patent predictor of instant stenosis and stent thrombosis. Moreover, the data from the Kang study showed that approximately 42% of patients with instant restenosis lesions have stent under expansion. And the optimal treatment so far of stent under expansion caused by calcified plaques is debatable. So far, many technologies have been introdu introduced to improve the treatment of stent under expansion. One of those methods could be the intravascular lithotripsy. However, the efficacy of and safety of intravascular lithotripsy have been confirmed in the novo calcified coronary lesions. And little is known about its utility in treating stent under expansion. The chairman, the aim of the current study was to investigate the impact of intravascular lithotripsy in treating stent under expansion. The current study is the a multi-center observational cohort study named the IVL Dragon Registry. The study was performed in high PCI volume center in Poland. The data set included patients with stand under expansion treated with IVL between November 2019 and April 2021. And the definition of expansion of the stand was uh, less than 80%, and the primary efficacy eight point was the procedur procedural success defined as the relative stand expansion over 80%. In the current study, we had patients who had a clinical indication for PCI. All patients had procedural failure due to stand under expansion, which was caused by a heavy calcification. And all of the patients in the current study were referred for uh, IVL. 24% of patients in our study had OCT-guided uh, PCI, 22 had IVUS-guided PCN, and all of the patients had QCI-guided PCI. The patient characteristic of our study showed that mean age of the patient was 69 years old. Most of the patient had acute coronary syndrome. Chronic coronary syndrome was observed in 48% of the patient. Diabetes was observed in 42%, and chronic kidney disease in 16% of the patient. Most treated vessel of in our in our study was LAD, and most of the patients had high pressure and balloon inflation inflation before intravascular lithotripsy. The procedural data showed that none of the patients had no reflow dur during the PCI with intravascular lithotripsy. However, one patient had perforation due to high pressure balloon inflation during the PCI. The OCT and uh, IVUS data showed that patients who, uh, that, that, um, that stent expansion at minimal stent area after, after uh, intravascular lithotripsy was higher compared to before IVL. The same was observed in MLA and, uh, and minimal stent area. However, ma maximal uh, calcium angle behind the stent was smaller after IVL and the maximal calcium thickness also was smaller after uh, IVL. The results from our results from our study showed that the procedural success was achieved in 72 percent of the patients. However, the logistic regression model demonstrates that independent predictor of unsuccess stent expansion defined as more than 80 percent after intravascular lithotripsy were chronic kidney disease and more than one stent layer in treated segment. The, the 30 days follow-up showed that there were only one cardiac death, 
And during the long-term follow-up, which was defined as the median uh, follow-up time as uh, 324 days, we observed uh, two, patient, two patients had cardiac death, two patients had TLR and target vessel MI. In the end of my presentation, I would like to, to present you the, one, of the, uh, one of the case report of our, of our patient who were added to, the, our, uh, to our registry. The patient was referred to our hospital because of an unsuccessful stand deployment in, other referral, uh, in our referral uh, center. In those patients, we performed the OCT before IVL and after IVL. Before uh, IVL, we observed stand expansion of 16%. And after IVL, after uh, introducing the 80 pulse of IVL, we expand the stand to the 92% uh, of, the, of the stand. And the, 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 the patient was, uh, the result was satisfactory and, and um, the follow-up was without uh, any adverse of events. In conclusion, in this real life, the largest to date analysis of intravascular lithotripsy litot used to manage underexpanded stent presented IVL as an effective and safe modality to facilitate stent expansion and luminal gain. This, di this data should help guide optimal treatment in this group of patients. And our findings warrant a larger prospective study with long-term clinical outcomes to confirm intravascular lithotrips as the emerging first-line therapeutic option treat stand under expansion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for the, this uh, very interesting presentation. I think uh, it is really a, a, a valid solution for a problem that might be encountered in daily practice. That means the under expansion of the stand due to deep calcification. Uh, the presentation is open for discussion, please. Uh, Dr. Right. Wenha, uh, I, I, have a, I have a, a, some limited experience uh, of this unexpanded uh, stand uh, with ISR, but I found it uh, uh, IVL for calcium behind the stand shroud is difficult to, to break. Uh, any tips and, tips and tricks uh, to help me to, to break the calcium behind the stand? Uh, could you repeat? Very, I, I have good, uh, uh, okay. I, I found it uh, very difficult to crack the calcium uh, behind the stand shroud in, in actual practice. And any tips and tricks uh, you, you give? Um, uh, uh, yeah. Can you give me some hints? The, uh, the, the most tip and tricks in from those study is that what we observed that really high high percent of the patient with instant restenosis has got under expanded stent. However, in those patients, sometimes it is quite difficult to introduce introduce the intravascular imaging system IGUS or OCT to do the, to, to to give the definition of under expanded stent this caused by one stand one or more stand layer and heavy calcification and sometimes it is difficult to diagnose clear for the definition of the stand under expansion caused by uh, by using the intravascular imaging however we use the stand boost to to diagnose under expanded stand in in our uh, in in the vessel, and it is quite good, uh, quite good um, tip and tricks to define the underexpanded stand when it's difficulty to introduce the intravascular imaging. But I, I mean, it's, uh, even I use the the shortwave balloon. Uh, sometimes I, I I found it difficult to crack the calcium behind the sensor. So in our study, uh, we define we find that patient who had chronic kidney disease and one more than one than mm -hmm. more than layer, the expansion could be unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. However, the the results qu were quite optimistic. And we right now we don't have any other method of treatment how mm -hmm. to treat patient with a stand under expansion. Maybe in LAD it could not be problem because we can add the lima to LAD, ask the surgeon to help. In the to, when we have got the single uh, stand under expansion in a circumflex on in, or in RCA, it could be the problem. And in my opinion, this is one method of the treatment. To 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 to, ref, to treat patients with stand under expansion. 
What is your opinion? Some, some, sometimes, I mean, in some patients with underexpanded stent, uh, even if you are using large balloon, high pressure, and so on, it is not that easy to expand the stent because of that severe calcification and the uh, quanti quantitative amount of calcium beyond the stent. Uh, did you have any case in your uh, in, in your cohort uh, having severe calcification? And uh, uh, do you think that uh, intravascular lithotripsy will be effective also in these cases? In our study, we observed that all of the patients had better expanded stent after intravascular lithotripsy. Uh, however, also in patients who had a deep calcification. Uh, but in our study, we have specified cohort of the patient because we we had one minimum one stand layer in the target segment in the, in the target lesion. So this is quite a different situation than than in the novo calcified lesion. There is a stand, for example, stand implanted ten years ago, and there is there is a, a instant restenosis and stand is is uh, under expanded. So this is quite a different situation, but in all of the patients in our study, we uh, reveal the uh, satisfactory result. May I ask one quick question? Uh, one okay. of the concerns about using IBL in, inside a stent is that it will disturb the integrity of the polymer coating. Did you have an exclusion criteria? Did you want the stent to be at least six no, months old uh, we, or three months uh, old? We did not. We, we did not. We did not observe. Uh, we did not um, have any uh, any uh, any criteria in which we exclude patient. We also we also have patient with uh, under expanded stent in left main. And right now we are performing performing the prospective registry uh, of under expanded stent in uh, left main or intravascular lithotripsy in left main. Thank you. So it is also safe in those kind of patients. The the discussion is to perform uh, the the discussion is to perform the uh, intravascular lithotripsy in in SVG. We did not have any of those kind of patient in our registry. It works quite nicely. We are presenting a case neuro PCR of IBL in grafts. It works very well. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we are uh, over time. I would like to wrap up what we have uh, had today in this season. I think we had really three fantastic uh, uh, presentation. Uh, first, we have learned about the future in intravascular imaging, which will be the combining uh, uh, OCT and IVUS in the same capture. And this, I, I think this will be absolutely revolutionary in the uh, intravascular imaging. And we have seen really fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, uh, imaging also with uh, very defined details and so many criteria which will be, can be uh, driven by this uh, combination of these two uh, modalities. Uh, in second presentation uh, uh, about the use of intravascular imaging in uh, a primary angioplasty, I think uh, we was convincing us that the use of intravascular imaging uh, is useful because it improves, uh, improves the outcome in terms of reduction of maze and reduction of total mortality, which is not, uh, which is not uh, I mean, uh, just a secondary endpoint, which is a he very heavy endpoint. And uh, lastly, about the uh, use of intravascular lithotripsy in uh, uh, underexpanded stent, I think this is also a very uh, interesting and uh, uh, also a very useful uh, indication because many times the underexpanded stent cannot be expanded by only balloon because the underexpansion is due to the mass of calcium outside behind the stent. And if you are not removing or at least modifying the uh, calcified uh, plaque uh, compliance, you will never end with good expansion of the stent. And this was a really good e explanation and convincing data coming from uh, the, the presenter. I'd like to thank uh, all the presenters for the excellent presentation and the panelists for the excellent discussion as well. 
and uh, thank you uh, thank you very much again